Would you please stand with me? How many of you love Jesus? How many of you in here love Jesus? Will help me sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus this morning. Him singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Lord Saints, devotional text will be found in the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. For this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the might of his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith that ye may be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes the knowledge, that ye may be filled with the Holy Spirit and the fullness of God. Verse 20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us, amen. amen. Shall we pray? Father God, Lord, we come once again, thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. Lord, we cannot name them, nor we cannot count them, Father God, but we just wanna say much obliged to you right now, Father God, because it was you and only you that allowed us this opportunity, Father God, to praise your name right now. As we assemble here in the great crowd of witnesses, Father God, we're going to pray 
release you for who you are, Father God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done for us in our lives. We are witness and understand there are some folks in here right now that has went through surgery and is here today, Father God. Those that are sick, Father God, is here, Lord Jesus. We know, Father God, those right now, Lord, that, that are going through trying times, but they are here, Lord Jesus. And it's all because of your power, Father God. And you have done it exceedingly in our lives. So right now, Father God, I pray and ask you, Father God, to continue to be with us. Never forsake us. Never leave us, Lord Jesus, because we are nothing without you, Father God. When chaos is around us, Father God, you have given us the power of hope, Lord Jesus. When, when trouble is around us, Father God, you've given us the power of peace, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just want to say thank you, must rise right now, Father God. And we pray and ask you, Father God, that you would just bless this service, that your spirit will come in and urshal this whole entire uh, service, Lord Jesus. That you will bless every component of this service, Father God, from the singing, Lord Jesus, from the, the, the giving, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless the preaching, Father God. Bless the man of God that come right now, Lord. Lord, he has prepared all week long, and we are just anxious to hear a word from you. So right now, Father God, we ask you to have your way in our lives, and we'll forever give you the praise. We're definitely going to give you the honor and the glory. In your son Jesus' name, amen. morning St. Luther. Hasn't he been good again? <laughs> God has been good again. He allowed us to be in his presence. And in case you've forgotten, we're here to tell you this morning that we got a feeling everything's going to be all right. All right? Everything's gonna be alright 
Zia Chip forgive me. Yes, you are in charge. From the back to the front with everybody please stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, God, we thank you for this moment you allowed us to come here and sing one more time. Father God, we thank the one that gave. We thank the one that had a mind to give and didn't have it to give. Father God, we pray on the next time around they may have it to give. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Luther. At this time, we'd like to recognize our visitor this morning. If you're a visitor here at St. Luther, would you please stand? Amen, amen. All right, come on, St. Luke. Let's welcome him in this place. We welcome you here today with open arms and the love of God. And we ask that you come again real soon. Thank you. All I want to do is bless your name. Bless your name. For all you've done. 
All I want to do is give you praise. Give you praise all day. And bless your wonderful name. Come on, sing. Oh my. Bless your name for all you've done. For all you've done. All I want to do. All I want to do is give you praise. Give you praise. Give you praise. All day. And bless. For the blessings you pour upon my soul for honor and strength you bestowed peace, love, and joy you've given to me for mercy and grace Every day I see yeah. All I want to do Bless your name Bless your name, God Bless your name For all you've done For all you've done All I want to do
somebody ought to bless him. Stand to your feet and bless him. Come on, stand to your feet and bless him. Oh, somebody just tell him thank you. Thank you for loving me. You love me first. Thank you for keeping me. You kept me when I couldn't keep myself. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for leading me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Glory to God. Thank you for going before me. Thank you for right, being right behind me. Thank you for being on my side. Thank you for giving me a head to lean on. Thank you for wiping away my tears. Thank you for removing the pressure. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for removing the stain. Glory to God. You've been good. says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And behold, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. But then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. And so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. And I'm going to use this as a subject this morning, in, in the hands of the potter. In the hands of the, of the potter. Uh, we're not our own. And he's still shaping us. Amen. Amen better than I, than I once was and better than I, I used to be. And, but I, I, I thank God for what he's doing. I, I don't know if anybody in here remembers playing with uh, Play-Doh when you were young. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about mud now. I'm talking about Play-Doh. You know, Play-Doh came in, came in all colors, the newer version. You know, you could mesh it all together and roll it. And you could form a few things out of it. You know, couldn't get too extravagant or anything like that. But I can remember, you know, taking the Play-Doh and rubbing it on the comic books on Sunday. You know, comic books used to be, you know, comic used to be in color, amen. And the color would actually transfer over to the, to, to the Play-Doh. You know, but there's one thing you had to remember about uh, the Play-Doh, and I found out the hard way is that when you put it away, you couldn't forget to put the top on it. Because if you didn't put the top on it, playtime was over, amen. Get hard and nothing that you could do with it after that. You, you had to throw it away. Hardened Play-Doh uh, could no longer fulfill the purpose uh, for which it was created, to be molded and to be shaped. 
in, in this text, a person who molds and shapes the clay is called the potter. But, but we know of a master potter. God is the master potter. He formed us, man, out of the earth. He yearns, and it is his desire to shape our hearts to be vessels of his love. Uh, he desires to mold us and to shape our minds to be containers of his wisdom. And just as with the Plato, for God to fulfill his desires for us, we need to remain soft and pliable in his hands. Uh, I, I want to impress upon you this morning that fact. For Hebrews 4 and 7 says, again, he, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. In, in this text, Jeremiah goes to the potter house and he finds him making something out of clay. And the Hebrew word for potter is yatsa, and, and it means to form, uh, to fashion, to frame. And, and Jeremiah sees the potter fashioning something, making something. Uh, we don't know what it was. Maybe it was a cup, maybe it was a bowl. Uh, we do know that, that when it doesn't turn out like the potter intended, he starts over and, and he makes something else. And, and, and you have to make note of the fact that, that he's doing the shaping. The potter is. And it's his prerogative to start over if he wants to. Because the, the potter is in control. How many of you know God's in control? And, and the potter has established the standard. Amen. We, we don't get the right to establish uh, the standard. Uh, fifth and the sixth verse in that text continues. says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. God speaks to Jeremiah and compares the potter to himself and, and the clay to Israel. We're the clay this morning, church. And God is saying that it's his prerogative, his eternal purpose, to mold and shape us as he pleases. I know that's a problem for some, somebody in here. When we don't like to be shaped, we don't like to be molded, we don't like to be touched, we don't like to be directed, we, sometimes we don't even like to be talked to, amen? But he, 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 he continues by stating that Israel has forgotten him. And the people are not fulfilling the purpose for which he formed them. We, we are coming up on a 110 years as a, a body of Christ. And we really have to ask ourselves to really search our hearts, questioning whether we are operating within God's plan for our lives. We are his handiworks, but are we fighting him in disobedience? First of all, we glean from this text, in the hands of the potter, that, that we are not our own. We have been created by God, and we have been created for God. Second, it's God's prerogative to make out of our lives what he wishes. God may use us as his vessel, his tools, whenever and however he wants. I know it's a whole, that's a whole lot for some of us to, to swallow. 
because we have dreams and we make plans and we establish goals and we put things into place and we make all kind of sacrifices. We run here and we run there and sometimes we run over people, sometimes we step on people, sometimes we stab people in, in the back, but we'll do all kind of things to get to where we think we ought to be. Sometimes we can't sleep at night wondering about the choices that we made. In fact, for the young folk in here, I know it can be a young adult's nightmare. What is it that I should be doing with my life? But listen, he may use us as corporate executives, or he may use us on an assembly line. He, he may use us in daycare or caring for an elderly parent. It's his prerogative. And, and, and if I could let you know something about my experience, he can change his mind. And, and I'm not talking about a midlife crisis. And so we have to be careful how we respond to what, what he's doing. How do you respond when God fashions your life one way for one purpose and then he changes it to another? Think about, for instance, if you've been a career woman, and then God calls you to be a stay-at-home mom. Do you argue with the potter? How about when he moves you from, for say, a, a not-for-profit environment, you know, whether the rule is budgets and more than enough to a not-for-profit, and the rule is just making it through the day, it's his prerogative. You've been in charge all your life with people coming to you at your call, and now you're the one waiting and just hoping to be called. Do you argue with the potter? Or do you prayerfully consider how he wants to use your days now? Do you submit yourself every day to God so he can feel you with his love, it's important how you react. Think about if you used to being healthy, but now battle a health problem. Are you continuing to look in the face of your potter now to see how he wants to use you as a vessel, even at the hospital, with your doctor, or a witness to, to friends and family? Have you ever gone to visit somebody at the hospital and found them having church? Testifying to everyone they could get to, get to listen. In fact, they wait till the, they get to the hospital to talk about their church. We can be vessels useful to our partner, even when the shape or the direction of our lives takes a different turn. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. See, we have this picture, this image of what and, and who we want to become, and our prayer is, Lord, use me in your vineyard. But then we want to do everything else but pick grapes. And I'm speaking from experience. Don't, don't get bent out of shape over where you are or what's happening to you. God hadn't forgotten about you. In fact, he, he may be shaping you to be a vessel uh, to further his kingdom or to be a vessel of his mercy. Uh, God, the, the potter, warned Israel that if they became hardened against him, that they would be broken. Uh, Jeremiah 19, chapter 11, verse, and, and, and shall say unto them, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city, as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again. Uh, if you ever work with clay, or even Play-Doh, you understand God's message. Hardened clay cannot be reshaped. Oh no, I, 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 I worked with clay and Play-Doh a few times. Got some in my office right now, amen. And, and you can only work it 
if it's moist. And so the potter has to continually apply water to the to clay to keep it soft and, and, and pliable. Because if it becomes hard, you can no longer do anything with it. Clay is only valuable when it's in the potter's hand, when it is soft and, and, and pliable to the potter's touch. The point I'm making ought to be very clear. Uh, St. Luther, are we hard-headed, hard-hearted, hardening sin, hardening our old ways of doing things, hardened to the conviction of the, the Holy Spirit? Or well, are we soft in our potter's hand? allowing him to mold our lives through the Holy Spirit as we study his word and pray. We'll know what to pray when we study his word. And then his word will be activated when we pray. But the text warns us, says we are hypocrites if we say, Lord, you are my potter, but we always find ourselves climbing down off the wheel. You would give him lip service if, if we say he's our potter, but we don't pray for the anointing flow of the Holy Spirit to keep us soft and pliable in his hand. And, and I just need to tell you that when you sit down on the preacher as he unfolds God's message that you're not sitting down on a preacher, but you're sitting down on God. You're becoming hard, and you're making it impossible for God to use you. Now you might say it doesn't take all that, but you've got to remember that, that David, a man after God's own heart, danced out of his clothes. When, when they told Jesus to, to, to shut up, but he let them know that you don't want to say nothing, don't worry about it. I get a rock cry out for me. And, and just as God recreated the earth with, with the flood, he can recreate us when we pray for the Holy Spirit to flood us with his life cleansing power. I ought to be able to get a witness in here this morning. Because if not, I got to ask the question. Do you feel dry? Some of y'all look dry. Are you been out of shape? Do you feel like your life is uh, spinning out of control? You need to get back on the potter's wheel. Pray for the Holy Spirit to flood your mind, your heart, your emotions, and, and your will. We have to stay in God's hands as he molds us and shapes us into a vessel useful for his purpose. In, in the potter's hand. Some say that you place your life in, in God's hands. But have you really? Are you finding yourself wishing that you were in someone else's shoes? Wishing that you had what they, they had? Maybe you're wishing that you had a better job. Lived in a different house. Maybe you look different or had perfect children. I know as parents we want what's best for our children. As employers we want uh, employees to, to manage our business and do what's best that will cause us to be successful. As, as spouses it's our desire that we have a good marriage, the best marriage. As friends we, we want the best that a relationship has to offer. In ministry, we want God to be glorified and for our service to reach home every time. But what happens when the bottom drops out? What, what happens when a sp spouse walks out the door and, and doesn't come home? What happens when a child turns and says, I hate you? What happens when you find yourself sitting alone by yourself on Christmas Day? What happens when the good folk at, at church are the ones who cause us so much pain? What do we do then? See, those are the, the difficult days. 
the difficult times when we cry and when we worry, when we almost lose our mind. Isaiah 40, fifth chapter and the ninth verses, woe unto him that strive it with his maker. Let the parts hurt, strive with the parts hurt of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, what makest thou or thy work? He had no hands. See, it's natural to wonder what in the world is going on. Has anybody ever had wondered that? Hey, just me, huh? Just me? What, what, what's happening? I don't understand. It, see, it is in those times, real, literally, that we look up to the hills, which come at all of our help. Because our help comes from the Lord. Rather than sit and cry, uh, we need to stop and, and drop to our knees and stop arguing with God. Matthew, the 26th chapter, the 36th through the 39th verses. Uh, then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and, and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. Jesus made it plain that he desired a different way than the cross. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Ghost. But, but then Jesus accepted the part of shape and purpose for his life. It, 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 mean being, it meant being left friendless. He submitted to humiliation. His body was bruised and, and torn, and, and he hung on the cross. He yielded to God's purpose for his life, even when it meant death. And for God to, to use us, to mold us, to shape us, we, we have to come out of our dry places. Psalm 63 and 1 says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And I come to tell you that, that you cannot survive in a desert. Uh, many have tried and died in the process. And so it is with a spiritual desert. And how sad it is to see Christians who choose to live in a very dry, depressing, discouraging, despairing, dormant, and defeated lifestyle for whatever reason or another. They have allowed their problems to overwhelm them. They have allowed their battles to exhaust them. They have allowed their burdens to overcome them, have allowed their fears to depress them for whatever reason or another. They have allowed their hardships to discourage them. And because of that, their spiritual roots are all dried up. And when you look real close, you'll find that there's no song in their soul, no praise on their lips, no life 
in their spirit. Oh Lord, no spring in their step, no glow in their face, no feeling in their testimony, no joy in the life. Somebody better listen to me because there is a well, a well of joy that'll never go dry from which you can drink from over and over again in the hands of the potter. There is a supply of grace that'll always be sufficient no matter your situation in the hands of the potter there is a river of mercy whereby you can find true and everlasting satisfaction in the hands of the potter he wants to mold us he wants to shape us but we got to stay moist and I want to let you know that there is a river, a river of God's goodness that never stops flowing. There is a river of God's love that never ceases. There is a river of God's blessing that always overflows. There is a river of God's assurance that everything is going to be all right. And there is a river of God's peace that'll carry you through the roughest times. There is a river of God's delight that'll flood your soul in the hands of the potter. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in here, in this place, that has come to the realization that, that you need to get back on the wheel? You need to know that when he's molding and when he's shaping, he's got his hands, his hands laid on you. And I don't know about you, but I don't ever want God to, to take his hands off of me <laughs> because no street can be safe without the Lord's hands. No home can really be happy without the Lord's hands. No fear can be overcome without the Lord's hands. No help can be sufficient without the Lord's hands. When you feel so low, so low that you gotta look up in order to see the bottom then you ought to come to the realization that you need the Lord's hands. When you feel that your best is never good enough, you ought to come to the realization that you need the Lord's hand. When you feel like nobody understands you, nor really seems to care about you, then you ought to know that you need the Lord's hand. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You need to know that when he's moving you and when he's turning you and when he's touching you, you need to know. In fact, is there anybody in here that's ever been touched by the Lord. Don't fool me now. Did he touch you 
with his finger of love? Did he touch you with his finger of love and kindness? Did he touch you with his healing power? Did he touch you with his Holy Ghost power? Glory! Glory! Hallelujah! I was shackled by a heavy burden beneath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hands of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul Something happened, and now, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. Since I met, I met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed me and made me whole, I'll never I'll never, I'll never be the same again. <laughs> never until eternity long. He's shaping and he's molding. It's his prerogative, but he's making things right. <laughs> He's making you right for the purpose that he has prepared. But you got to stay on the wheel. It's not about your wheel, but it's about his wheel. Harden not your heart. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. Open up your mouth. And say yes. Yes. Yes, yes to what he's doing. Yes to what he wants to do. Yeah, yes for the storm. Yes for the rain. Yes for the clouds. Yes for the stormy days. Because he's still making a way. Yeah, yes for your weakness. Because when you are weak, that's when he's strong. <laughs> He will come into your life. How do you know he will? Because he came into my life and I'm no longer the same. I thank God that he loved me so much that he gave his son, that his only begotten son, hallelujah, came to earth, walked the streets, glory to God. As a natural man, knew no sin, did no wrong, but for your sake and for my sake, he became sin. And for the will of the Father, he allowed them to take his life. He said, you can't take my life because I can lay it down and I can pick it back up again. You can't take my life, but I give my life and I give it freely. And he did so for you and for me. Hallelujah. He didn't just die. Glory to God. They hung him high, stretched him wide, put nails in his hand, rivers in his feet. And that was after they whipped him all night long till the flesh fell from his bone, pierced him in his side, and the blood came streaming down. Not just blood, but blood and water. Hallelujah. Hung there on the cross all Friday evening, all Friday night, all day Saturday. All oh, Saturday night, hallelujah. But early, somebody say early, early, 
Sunday morning got up, walked out of that grave with all power, all power. Somebody ought to look at a neighbor and say, all power, all power, healing power, saving power, turn around power, picking up power, all power in his hands. Glory to God to walk around on the earth before he ascended into heaven. Glory to God. To, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you and for me. Is there anybody in here that's glad about the intercessions? Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that's glad your Savior and my Savior is praying on your behalf? Hallelujah. Because you don't know what's happening. You don't know which way to turn. You don't even know which way, what to say. But glory to God, you've got a Savior that's speaking on your behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. And thank you for your touch. Thank you. Thank you for shaping me. Thank you. Thank you for molding me. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for saving me. I tried to save myself. I tried to keep myself. I tried to lead myself. And I found myself going around and around and around and around and around. Kept tripping over the same old mess. Stumbling over the same old problems. Turning gray in my head. Losing my hair. Trying to cry myself to sleep. And I couldn't go to sleep. I just cried and I cried. Hallelujah. But something happened when the Lord God touched me. Hallelujah. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. Led me. Guide me. Kept me on a roll call straight. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that's willing to testify that the Lord God will keep you when you can't keep yourself? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that's willing to testify that when the enemy is all around, God will keep you. God will save you. And if you trust in him, if you will lean on him, if you will learn of his word, if you will do his word, God will do everything that he's promised us. Uh, hallelujah. I understand and, and, and I know that sometimes when, when, when things are, get hard and things get tough and you don't know and you can't really understand and in your mind you're trying to justify it and make it make sense. Uh, you're thinking about his promises uh, on your life and your prayers and it just seems like it just it's just not coming into fruition and, 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 my, and my brothers and my sisters that's 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 the time for prayer and and, and, and that's the time for understanding and then you don't have to be ashamed to, to ask God, show me. 
Show me. And, 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 and sometimes what, what God will do is, is, is God, will, God will allow you to see him moving in somebody else's life. But you have to know the word that says that he's no respecter of persons. And believe that what he'll do for somebody else, he'll do for you. Uh, you, you, you may be praying for, for healing that, that, that he'll touch you and then he'll allow you to see somebody else that you've been praying for, that you've been praying for. Walk in. Didn't touch, didn't, hadn't healed you yet, but, but he, he's still responding to, to your prayers for somebody else. And so you, that's the time when you have to believe his word that, that, that when Job prayed for his friends, that's when he received his, his healing. You, you, you have to stay on you have to stay on the wall and you you can't you can't not come come down because he's still shaping you he's still molding you you, you, you you're not what you used to be glory to God but you can't even fathom what he's doing and what he's preparing you for but by all means, as we go into the Lord's Supper, don't forget that for you to be pliable, you got to be moist. And that's going to come from that river of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, yes. It's a yes. It's a yes. It's a yes. Because he, he, he prepares for us. And, and he promises that he will be with us even to the end. Amen. 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 Doors of the church are open. Amen. You can call him as candidate for baptism, Christian experience, or or letter. But 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 come. We 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 offer you. We offer you Christ. Um, we we speak and talk about membership, but really this is about relationship. David says, the Lord is my shepherd, and thus I shall not walk. He had a relationship that, that he called God by his name, Lord is my shepherd. And because of my relationship, I shall not walk. I may not get everything I want, but I know I'll have everything that I need. And that begins with saying yes to him, that you can call him Lord and that you can call him Savior. Why don't you come? Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Before we go into the Lord's Supper, let me just, just say this, because, uh, you know, uh, the spirit of discernment, you look out and, and you see people and, and you know that they really don't know the Lord. And they really don't have the relationship with him. And even though you might have said and might have preached the day you hear my voice, hard not your heart, you, you, you can sense that there is a hardening of the heart and an unwillingness to 
embrace. And while there might be the urge to get up, it is the enemy that is holding you down. It's, it is the, it's the enemy is, 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 is saying that uh, you're good enough and that you don't, you don't need to do that and that you're all right. And there are a whole lot of people worse off than you. And the fact of the matter is, maybe the way you ought to be looking at it is that is there are a whole lot of people who didn't get to see today. And tomorrow is not promised to you. And, and, and not so much about the church, but I need, I need him. And there's no way other than expressing my willingness to open my heart to him, to have him work on my behalf. And so when we are instructed to plead and, and, and beg for those who we know don't have that relationship to come, we do so not because we are looking for numbers, but we do so out of obedience. You wonder why you do the same thing over and over and over again every Sunday and nobody joins. Uh, I have to be careful not to take on a sense of defeat. Uh, I just have to do what it is I'm instructed to do. But I have to make sure that the, the, the message is plain and it's clear uh, that, that, that the reason is that somebody say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Amen. 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 We celebrate the Lord's Supper.
Has everyone been served? Amen. Amen. The Bible says that on the, the same night, that same man, that same day, that uh, was betrayed, that one of his own betrayed him, sold him, tell where he is for just 30 pieces of silver. In knowing what was coming, and he set the stage for what we're doing today. Uh, later, Paul, in, in, in teaching and in, in the celebration of, of the feast, that wanted people to know that that is serious business that we do, and that we don't and shouldn't go into it lightly. Gave examples of people who were sick and had died because. Um, they went about it for the wrong reason and in the wrong way. But the instructions were that that, that as often as you, you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. And we do so today in remembrance of, of who he is and what he did and the effect it has on each of us, whether or not we have the right to eternity. But he says the, uh, the bread, uh, they have to get broken and prayed for it. He said it, 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 it's a symbol of my broken body. Uh, and so you take it and you, you remember how my flesh suffered for you, uh, the bread. And likewise, in the same manner, he, he took the cup but he introduced a new covenant. Um, and this, the, the, the wine, the drink, represented the blood that he shared. His blood was a different blood than that of bulls and, and, and goats and, and, and sheep that had to be done over and over again, but his was a one-time kind of blood. But it represented a, a new covenant. That, and so likewise, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of him. Some of y'all act like y'all need bigger cups. <laughs> Amen. 